Well, police in Kasarani area of Nairobi are holding five suspected fraudsters who have defrauded unsuspecting Kenyans of millions of shillings by swapping their SIM cards and milking them dry. Emotional damage! Detectives recovered more than 2,000 SIM cards, 15 phones, internet routers from different service providers, and registers with details of unsuspecting Kenyans from across the country dating back to 2018. Safaricom will never ask you for your ID card number because they have it. Technology alone isn't sufficient for any distinction and might exist between differently realms. Johnny, <laughs> 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 I'm going to go to the 
1996, the Council of Europe, together with government representatives from the United States, Canada, Japan, China, and the rest of the countries, drafted a preliminary international treaty covering computer crime around the world. Also, around the world, civilian liberation groups immediately protested provisions in the treaty requiring internet services providers to store information on the customer's transaction and to turn this information over on demand. Either work on the treaty proceeded nevertheless, and, the no and on November 23, 2001, the Council of Europe Convention on Cybercrime was signed by 30 states. Kenya included. The convention came into effect in 2004. Additional protocols covering terrorist activities and racist, not forgetting xenophobic cybercrime, were proposed in 2002 and came into effect in 2006. In addition, various national laws such as the USA Patriot Act of 2001 have expanded law enforcement power to monitor and protect computer networks. This either does not put away Molot because Molot is becoming a technological cyberspace, a hotspot to criminal activity in Africa. It could be the African Silicon Valley.